place has surrounding somewhere. Every place has like a hood. Now, now, do you guys have areas like this here? Not really, do you? Not like that, do you? No, no, no. Not like you, don't, that. you don't really have any class one areas around in Santa Barbara area. You really don't. Okay. Grid areas are generally grid areas. Twenty percent of the neighborhood is vacant. There's some graffiti, not too much. There's some gang activity. Uh, this is what we call a one-out neighborhood. One out from Ground Zero. Ground Zero is going to be an area where I was I was door knocking in East St. Louis the other day, uh, about a month and a half ago, and we went to an area where nobody's working. I mean, it looks like a war zone. I mean, honestly, it does. It looks like a war zone. And you don't see bandit signs. You don't see anything there. Like and I said, bomb folks, I said, off, nobody would even know I said, it. yeah, if a bomb went off, nobody even know it there, you know? There's people living there, but it's it's so bad. Buildings are falling down. They've got fences around the buildings. I mean, that's a true ground zero. The only way that's going to come back is from city financing, beautification projects, things like that. I mean, they you don't see bandit signs there. You don't see anything there. So this is what we call a one-out neighborhood. You know, this area, you might see... Apartment complexes boarded. Who's ever seen apartment complexes boarded up? Yeah, that happens. You know, uh, most of the time they'll be less than 30 years old. A lot of them. Okay, a lot of these apartment complexes. Some of the properties are. Boarded. And I got to tell you what, if you guys could see what I've seen through the country, all the different places, it's really funny because all homeowners say the same thing. I mean, they just have, they have their own script. Now, nah, you know, we're working on modification. Now, nah, you know, we're just going to get back to the bank. Now, nah, you know, uh, we're not behind. Now, nah, you got the wrong address. It didn't make any difference if I'm talking to them in Santa Barbara, if I'm talking to them in Washington, D.C., or if I'm talking to them in, in Des Moines, Iowa. They all say the same thing. All right? They all say the same thing. Some properties are boarded up, some are not. Bandit signs are welcome in a class one area. Okay? Bandit signs are welcome. A trace of rehabbers working, however, not a real safe area to be in. Okay, I was just in Philadelphia the second second week of, I trained six days in a row in Philadelphia with three different students. And we went to a couple rougher areas in Philadelphia. And there were one areas. But I gotta tell you what, there's a lot of activity. Because it was right west of Temple University. Temple is right north of downtown Philly. Right west of there, there's a pocket of about 10 square blocks. It's just a war zone. But it's, it's, it's really not a great <laughs> zone. It's, it's, it's a class one area. But you know what's around most of it? Temple's been buying some of the property around it. So what's going to happen to that property? That's a gold mine right there. Because Temple owns property on the north and on the south. To the west is a river and an old brewery town. Okay, that they're putting condos or what do they call it? lofts? Loft. They're doing lofts and stuff. They're yeah. loft projects. So this whole thing's being surrounded by Temple University and some new construction. So I told them, I said, this is a gold mine right here. And they're like, well, this is a pretty rough area. I said, listen, I said, you find out who lives here. You chase all these people in these 10 by 10 square block area. And I said, you find out who's in distress who's losing the property, the landlords, and you start working that market, because that market's going to do nothing but go up. It's not going down. It's going to start going up. Okay, and no worries. We're like not going to take you to a neighborhood like that. No. No worries in the room here. Class 2 area. See here, you see a lot of boarded up stuff. You see a little bit of color here on some of the houses, so it still looks like it has a little bit of life. Still a grid area. 10 to 20 percent are vacant. Uh, you know, Signs, uh, let's see, neighborhoods don't care about the bandit signs in the area. They basically welcome them. You know, they want people to take care of this house that's next door. I've been living here 30 years. This has just been nothing but a problem house. I want somebody to buy it and fix it up. Why? Because it helps my property, because I've been living here for so long. Okay, class three area. See, it's starting to look better, isn't it? Yeah. See what we're doing here? If you notice, the houses this are looking is the nicer. Bread and butter. This yeah. is where the day in, day out, you know, flipping 50, 60, 70 houses a year, this is where they are. The, bread, than, the daily yeah. bread and butter, always you can get a deal, like just you can go out every day and get yourself a deal. Less than 5% are boarded up. Vacant properties are less than 10%. Uh, rehabbers are working these areas heavily. Anybody know where the rehabbers are working in some of the areas around here? 
Yeah, you guys know. But see, you guys do a lot of business. So you guys know. You know what you, you know what to look for. All right, and neighborhoods making a comeback in a level three. This is what we call a three out neighborhood, three neighborhoods out from a ground zero. Okay, and, and they're fringe areas. Because what you have is you have your ground zero here, then you have the ones that are here, the twos and the threes. You'll find out that rehabbers don't go into ground zero, they'll just go into one, one plus, twos, they'll be there. You'll find out that threes are even more rehabbers at the time. Okay, and just depending on where you're at. Neighbors are watching properties that are vacant in a level three area. Bandit signs are welcome. Uh, the best fix and flip areas are two plus to, to a three plus. Those are the best bread and butter areas to work. You got level four now. Level four, basically, look how much nicer they're getting. Mostly track properties, not grid areas. They're the neighborhoods you go into and get lost because you're like, okay, now where am I going? I'm going over here. No, oh, this is a, this is a cul-de-sac. Right? You know, who's ever been in those neighborhoods yeah. before? You get you get turned around in them all the time. There's always like one way in and one way out, you know, and you always end up somewhere in the middle. So that's what a lot of those areas. They're not a grid area. They're an area that's just kind of laid out, and you can tell those by going on and looking at the uh, the programs that we go into to look at areas. Because when you start looking at some of these areas, you say, well, this is a grid area, this is a new area, this is an older area. And you start looking at what's going on in those areas. Uh, most of the track homes are, it can be nicer grid areas, older bandit, I mean, older areas. Bandit signs are really not welcome a lot of times in these areas. You'll start seeing them coming down, okay? Um, it says limited rehabbers in the area. Be careful not to just focus on this type of an area. Uh, it's okay if you have a buyer's list for this area. But this is a great no equity structuring area, a three plus to a low five. Okay, great great area to, to go in and yeah, do some no equity structuring. Yeah, that's where the most no, no equity structuring deals are. Right there, is yeah. In the fours. Yeah, in the fours. So the threes are good for flipping, the fours are good for the no equity, not short sales, the no equity deals, the fours are the, are the best for that. Because people in that kind of neighborhood, they have a lot of pride and ownership, if they lost their house, they still want to live into another house. They don't want to live in an apartment or a condo. It's a different mentality than you have in a two or a three neighborhood. And uh, even like a, a one or a two. It's not that they don't have pride of ownership. They do. But not enough people in the neighborhood have pride of ownership. There's a lot of landlords, a lot of renters, you know, and people don't care. Who's ever had renters before? Do they take care of the house like you do? No. No, not at all. Okay, not at all. Okay, here's a level five area. Now see, this is starting to look a little bit more like an area that you guys are in. Gated communities, tough time getting into the gated communities. Uh, you know, you have to have great marketing mailers, lumpy mail. A lot of the homeowners are going to be in denial. They're going to have pride issues. There's no bandit signs at all in these areas. Be consistent with your communication with the distressed homeowner. And really, no rehabbers are really working in a lot of the class five areas. Then you have the class five plus, which are all these nice areas like this. There's big money in these areas right here, but there's guard houses. Hard to knock the doors here. You have to do mailings. You have to either mail UPS, FedEx, you know, USPS info, whatever. Consistent on your mailings. Most of the time they're on golf courses. You know, uh, work with realtors or the beach. Yeah, work with realtors and, and you know, if you're a realtor, be the go-to realtor in these areas, selling to investors, you know, and users. Um, Distressed homeowners will have staff that might answer the door if you do get here. Don't be intimidated. And a lot of them are around country clubs and stuff. You have a lot of five plus areas here, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them. A little bit tougher areas to work. Are they still closed too? Absolutely. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. People are like, oh, they have money doing that because they have money. Well, what did they do to <coughs> earn that money? And did that job or company survive the economy? That's right. There's so many of those people sitting in foreclosures. That's exactly right. So look at this house. What is this? One, two, three, or four? Five. Five plus. What is it? Three. 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 Huh? Three? Good, good. That's a three. That's right. What about that one? Four. No, that's a five. What's that one? Four. Three. What's that one? Four. Five. Four. Four. That's right. Yeah. No, let me look. You guys these, are all, these are all people in, these are all houses in your neighborhood right now for sale. Is it for sale? This one's, this one's like 4. I think 4.5 or something like that. This one here is 500, like 95,000 bucks. I'm looking at this one. 
Seriously. <laughs> That's a nicer house. There. That's a nicer house than the one I have for. I mean, the house I have in 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 Denver right now that I just shorted is a nicer house than that one for one thirty. I'm is. looking at that, going, "Holy cow!" So I went on today and I thought, "Hey, I'm gonna pull some of these out." Now, why is this a three and not a four? Just basically because of the age. Same age as this. All right, this is a newer home. You can see it's bigger. Okay, a lot nice, lot 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 bigger area. This is a newer home than this one is. This is an old home. That's an old wood frame home, uh, maybe on a slab, uh, rear beam. I don't know what it's what it's on. Here's this one. What's that one? One. Two. Oh, look at one. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> you did, you did one. Pretty good though. Pretty close. That's a two. All right. What's that one? Three. That's a three. What's this one? Four. 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 Yeah. What's that one? Three. One. That's the same as this one. Two. Just the, back the other of it. side of the house. I looked at it. It's on the same the same thing. So I looked at it and I thought, this isn't right. This is the same house, but what's going on? So one of these is a reverse negative or something. It's backwards. Because see, here's the garage back here. And here's the back of the garage. It's just not, not right, but it's the same house. But these are all houses right here in this area right now. Yeah. So and you have and you have houses. Some of these are in what is it, Oxnard? Yeah. Right down the street here. Which I saw some houses down there in the 170s. 190s, 200, That's a good 220s. Area for it seems like we drove through it today. Plus, we've been online looking. Like that's a good area. That is, yeah. So this is one of our guys, Michael. Um, he came to a two-day class. He got involved with us. Started working with us. Had never done a deal before, and this was his first deal. Found a house worth 600, and He's they owe 600, Florida. and it was going to sale pretty quick. In December. Well, no, yeah, he got this. He got, he started the short sale right after Thanksgiving. Yeah, so this and is a really quick told. deal. And so the bank just basically said, look, if you can close it by the 30th of December and get it off the books, we'll take the short sale. We'll take 50 percent. But if you don't close by the 31st, the deal's off. So if you have a bank telling you, I'm only going to give you two weeks to close, but I'm going to give you a 600,000 dollar house for 300 thousand. Are you going to find something to do with that house? Yeah. Figure what out this, what this house okay. need for work? <laughs> it was beautiful. And he only gave the guy a $100 deposit. Yeah. He gave a $100 deposit to secure the deal. So I said, look, you don't have any experience in rehabbing. In this neighborhood, this is like a five, half, a, like five neighborhood. Five, yeah. I said, look, just flip the house to somebody else and just get rid of it. Close it. So and he took a $25,000 earnest money check. From the investor, buyer, and he sold it for one hundred thirty-seven thousand bucks. Is that Profit. a good deal? One hundred thirty-seven. Yeah. Right before December thirty. Let, let me wow. say that she sold it for one hundred thirty. He sold it for one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars profit. Profit. One hundred thirty-seven thousand. One hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars profit. That's correct. Right, he got a twenty-five thousand dollars. He sold it to a landlord, and the guy gave him a twenty-five thousand dollars non-refundable. You see, this one says twenty-five thousand, and this one says I think one twelve or something. Yeah, all together. Yeah. So it's 137. That's correct. That's wow. Yeah. Gary. Gary's been to our workshops since 2003. Uh, he averages over a million dollars a year, seven straight years in a row, using our system. Now the thing that's about that's nice about he made a million for his first year. His first year. Now, and he, he did the two-day training. We went and worked with him for two days. Showed me exactly how to structure his business, how to lay it out, how to do it. He spent the first six weeks before we did the training. He met us in July of 2003. He did six weeks worth of his own studying, the NLP, the scripts, the bankruptcy, the short sale process. And he worked eight hours a day just studying that five days a week. He said, I'm going to treat it like a job. So we went there first week in September. We went out and trained him for those couple days. His first week, not counting what we did, his first week in the business full time, he put 13 deals under contract. His first week. Wow. 13 in a deals. Week? Yeah, in a week. We were, even we were like, really? The guy's a machine. Have you ever met Gary? He'd be like, hey, it's nice to meet you, Chuck. What's up, buddy? What's up? How you doing? You know, hey, we're going to do some deals together. And he's just like, all over it. He's like, Gary, back away, man, you know? Lighten up a little bit. But he's like, all over it. It's like he's on crack. And you can just tell, he looks like he's on crack. He's ready to go. But that's just the way Gary is. And he's the worst driver. Him. Oh my God, he's the worst driver. 
So I'm all with him. I'm always sitting in the back saying, I feel like I'm on Mr. Tell's wild ride. You know, that yeah. ride in the theme parks. Wow. He's like, I what know. is it? He doesn't get the jump. I'm like, oh my gosh. He just bounces like... all over the road. <laughs> Jim, now Jim Farabee, Jim, Jim came to us in what, like 2006 or seven, seven in Atlanta? Years. Seven years. In Atlanta, seven years. Mm -hmm. He heads up our, uh, and you guys, you guys know Jim, we've talked about Jim before. He heads up our Short Stuff For You program, our partnership program. Jim's in over 600 short sales. 600 deals in seven years. Isn't in that good? seven years. The guy's a rock star. The guy's a machine. I'm oh. not kidding you, he's a machine. Big Money Jim. Big Money Jim, we call him. That's exactly right. Big Money Jim. He's a rock star. And he's, he's great. He lives in Louisville, Kentucky. He was just featured in... Um, oh, in uh, Realty Track. Was it Realty Track? Yeah, Realty Track. Yes. They, yes. Uh, so... Realty Track. Yeah, not to like talk about you know, an opposing magazine. Sorry about but, that. But Realty, you guys know Realty Track? And they did an article um, just last month. The and five. they chose five real estate investors from around the country that they featured, and one of them was me. And then when I was talking to them, they said, do you have any successful students? So I gave them a whole list of a bunch of people that were making money. And when, I, when the magazine came out, the article came out, uh, Jim and myself were two of the five. Right. I was like, oh my gosh, seriously? So he, that's his first time ever being written up about. He's got it framed. Everyone in Kentucky is like, oh my god, Jim's like, oh. Nationwide, he's in the paper. So, and, yeah, so we yeah. call him Big Money Jim. He's always he's making money. And he left a job with Ford. He was with Ford for how long? 25 years. 25 wow. years. He's making 160000 bucks a year. He's a robotic engineer, whatever the heck he does. He fixes all the robotic stuff that, at, at the plant. And he had all this overtime that he worked all the time. And he ended up walking away from a $160,000 a year job. So when he told his wife, hey, listen, I'm thinking about quitting Ford because I'm going to be a real estate investor, she said, I don't think so. <laughs> you know? So he went out and closed the deal and made, what, like $32,000? He made like thirty, and then he, this is in such a short time. And then like the very next deal was like thirty-seven, and the next one was like forty-two, And then after like, a, I think the third or the fourth deal, his wife said, listen, you've made so much more money and you're so much happier. Quit that job. and." do investing. But when you live in Kentucky and Louisville, and you got 25 years in a Ford. I mean, you've got the benefits, you got the pay, you've got the retirement. I mean, you're so close at that point. He's yeah. like, I don't even want to work here until I retire. Just, I, I hate it. Yeah. He didn't hate it, but he just, yeah. he would put in 80 hours a week. He Jeez. worked 80 hours a week to make $160,000. Yeah. It's like I have no quality of life. I just right. work. So now he puts in, I don't know, he probably still puts in 80 hours a week. Yeah, he likes to work. But he, He's done over almost 100 deals a year. Yeah. Which I think is pretty good. Very good. Pretty yeah. newsworthy. That's exactly right. Cesario. Cesario started working with us um, July of 2011. What is this, 13? 2011, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you what, he came to the two day workshop and he sat there and says, Man, I really want you guys to come and work with me. And he goes, I make $180,000 a year as a CPA. He's a partner in a partnership with a CPA firm. And he goes, I just hate numbers. I hate paperwork. I said, well, why are you in the real estate business? What do you want to go from one frying pan to the other? And he says, because I can be my own boss. You know, I can come and go as I please. And I said, that right there is the downfall. Because you think that you're self-employed, you don't have to work. You don't have to hold yourself to a schedule. You don't have to, you know, do things over and over every single day and start all over. So he ended up saying, well, you know, I really want to do this. And boy, he sat with you for what, like two hours just talking to you about really wanting to do it. And he went out, his first deal made 8,000 bucks, second deal 10,000, third deal 10,000, and he closed one for $52,000, all within one month. Six months. Six, he did that six in four, six months. Is that a good? Would you guys be happy with that, your four, six months? Yeah, he's all yeah. over. And he's he was a nervous wreck because he actually put his job first. And then just went into real estate full 40 hours a week, full on. Which is hard. So what, what you told him to do, because he was making a lot of money, he didn't have a lot of debt. You told him what? Have six months in reserves. Then take that six months that you're working and treat it like a job. And just give yourself a paycheck every week. Because you already week. can live on that. So that's and what And then give you six months to get a deal closed. He's like, no, I'm quitting my job. 
and we're like, come on. <laughs> you know, he's walking away from a lot of money. You know, that's a big risk on our part because he's walking away for $180,000 a year <laughs> to say, I can make this happen. We're like, okay, all right. It's just a second. Let's talk about that. So here's what we've got. Register tonight for the weekend. There's two days at this hotel. There's no outside speakers. It's just us. We're going to talk about, we're going to do some live training scenarios on how to make today cash on your no equity deals. We're going to talk about no equity structuring, putting cash in your pocket in two weeks. It's a small class for personalized training. I got to tell you what, when we were doing those classes six, seven, eight years ago, when there's 300 huge. people, they were huge. And you know what? You just can't talk to everybody. You know, everybody wants your time. You know, we're up here speaking for an hour and a half. Hey, guys, let's take a 15-minute break, and we'll all go to the bathroom. And then, whoop, everybody swarms, and you're standing here talking. we got to get going. Okay, let's go. i got to go. The, you know, all of a sudden, you don't get a break. You know, so these, these groups where there's smaller groups, where there's 20, 30 people, we, we love those groups, don't we? For us, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. Yeah, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, because like I said earlier, um, when I was addressing you, is that you know it, we really try to get to know you guys. It's important for us to get to know you so we can see how we can help you the best. And when there's just hundreds of people and they're all buying stuff, you don't get a chance to get to know anyone. It's not that they can't be as successful, but it's harder to help people that you don't know at all. Yeah. So we really do try to get to know people. We know thousands of our students. We know people by name. They have our cell phone number. Like we really work with people. Is we want you guys to have what we have. You know, we have a great life, we have a great marriage, we have two great houses, we have three great kids, we all have like this fairy tale thing, and we want that for everybody. Yeah. We, really do. we have a good time. We so we love the smaller classes, we really do. Uh, learn what, that, what no one else teaches too. You're Probably gonna find there's a lot tonight. of points. Now imagine two days. Would you learn more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you would learn a lot in two days. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's exactly right. Have you ever heard yeah. that before? Yeah. Because people don't teach that. And you know no. what? That's so important. We drove uh, that, what's that town called? Oxen? What's it called? Oxnard. 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 Right. Just today, we were driving through there, and we were just like, oh, this is two, it's three, it's this, this, nice. this, 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 I drive an hour and 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, in Denver, we, we live, live, we live, we live in the mountains, mountains like 9, on the dirt feet. road in the mountains yeah. at 9,000 feet. So, so we have to drive off the mountain to get down to town. So when we go out and go door knocking and stuff, it takes an hour to get to the bottom of the mountain. Wow. Yeah. So we, you know, because we're like, you know, way, way, way up. And we have, we have fun though. So we go down, we go, hey, let's just go make a day out of it. So we go down and bang doors for six hours. And we go into all these different areas. And there's sometimes that we go down there, or my, my son, he'll go out and he'll start running around and putting signs up. I usually he'll, say, he'll, drop he'll go out and classify mall. areas and he'll say, hey, listen, yeah, you end up, I drop her off at the mall. She'll go, hey, the mail stop. Drop me off. I do. So then I drop her off, come back like three and a half hours later. Well, my nails only took an hour. I said, well, my door knocking took longer, honey, sorry. <laughs> well, I had my toes done too then. Okay, no because, yeah, she, she doesn't go door knocking. She goes with us with all the good intentions, but it doesn't happen. I go door knocking with you guys a Yes, lie. you do. So, the two day workshop, this is the stuff we're going to cover again. Wholesaling foreclosures in today's market, seven ways to find foreclosures uh, your competition doesn't know about. Uh, how to buy non performing notes for less than 30% of the value of the property. How to get your biggest bang when advertising. Uh, the missing link to internet marketing. Ten ways to help underwater homeowners. We're going to cover all these. Learn bank, own all wholesaling. Uh, this uh, the um, three offer short sale system. We're going to talk about for about an hour and a half on that. Um, when you what you why you need to know the loan modification forbearance, no equity deals, principal reductions, what they are and how you can use them. How to keep your conversations moving forward with homeowners. How to close the deal for thirty thousand dollars profit in less than thirty days, and how to close your no equity deals to get today cash. All right, so we want you to go register because it's going to be Santa Barbara right here, September 28th and 29th, right here at the Fest Parker. So with that being said, we're done for tonight. We are done. Did you guys have fun? Fantastic. Yeah. 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 So, so if you are planning to come, we do want you to be registered so we have the tables and chairs set up properly. Um, so we are ready to have a list of people that are coming. Yeah. So um, we have a list of people that are coming. So we have a list of people that are coming. So we've already done that list and we've already called you. We'll probably still get one more phone call from our son confirming. I told her to confirm everybody three times. So, 
Has anyone talked to Will on the phone? So he's going to call you again Wednesday because we told him to make one more phone call Wednesday. <laughs> so he'll call us on Friday again. And for free. Yes. Yes. Oh, you know what? We forgot. Linda and Dan are picking up a tab for you guys to come here. Yay! Two days of all education for free. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Both days. Got to be here all time. Some people charge a lot more. I mean, it's not for free. I mean, originally I think they said forty-nine dollars. Yeah, for free. So you know. That kind of education is pretty hard to come by. We have a yes. good time doing it. If you guys are sure you're coming, give me that tonight so that we know who's coming. And um, like I said, two days if you want to bring somebody with you. Uh, bring your own booze. <laughs> I like one. You know, I, have been, I have been doing trainings for like 15 years. I have never ever sat in front of a group and had a sip of wine. No. Hey, I know. Stand there, right there. there. Right there. Right there. You know how this happened? What's that? I looked at meetup.com and I went, why is there like 1,500 people in this meetup.com stuff that are all going to this wine tasting? You know, maybe I'm in the wrong profession. Said, okay, I'm going to bring somebody to ours. That's a good idea. I only had like two. I was like, I was afraid to drink a whole bottle. Oh, no, you can't have her drink a whole bottle. I have such a lightweight. I have somebody from Texas who was up here. He said, Dan, the speaker's drunk. The speaker's drunk, man. <laughs> he got into us here real quick.